Hey, Benji. I'll tell you what. Good afternoon, everyone. Really, this really is Mario. Want, Today we have a really cool show for you. I wanna. One wanna, of the things wanna, on the show. Wanna, wanna, what do you really? I'm really. I'm really. What? It's time. Time for what? Time for Bulldog TV. SHS and welcome to another episode of Bulldog TV. I'm Mariel and I'm Amberly. On this edition of Bulldog TV we will be featuring stories about gaming, behind the scenes look at the school nurse, and a fight for life. Zelda, Black Ops, Call of Duty, Modern Warfare 3, and Atari. What do they all have in common? They are all a part of the gaming world. Here's Alex and Jose to tell us the latest trend in gaming. The Magnavox Odyssey is the first video game console released in 1972. The Atari 2600 became the most popular game console on the second generation. The NES, Nintendo Entertainment System, made video games popular again after the 1983 crash. Now everybody knows everybody's favorite map on Black Ops is Nuketown. But have you ever wondered how it would be in um, 2025? Would you suspect something different would change, like, I don't know, um, zombies with a population of one? I would be really scared to be on this bus and get out and try it and find gas. I would definitely not want to get out of this bus, especially when these guys are coming after you with these eyes. Biggest zombie map made so far and you have to travel by a bus. A place where you can pre-order Black Ops 2 is GameLot. I prefer Xbox 360 because I think it has a lot more things to do. I think there's going to be new weapons and uh, they're going to add a futuristic look to it. It will be cool to have zombies in Nooktown. I think those are the game designers. The High Elf, because of the magic. I like Call of Duty better than Battlefield. In other news, the new Dawn Guard is still not out for PS3, yet Xbox has both DLCs, Dawn Guard and Heartfire. On Heartfire, you can get supplies and build a house. With you building a house, you can adopt children. Man, hosting the show is so hard. Hard? Dude, our job is easy compared to the other ones here at SHS. Like? Our school nurse, check the story out. If it's one of those dates when you come to school feeling sick, you're in luck. The nurse's office is open from early in the morning until the end of the day. Oh, my daily routine, if it starts like today, it's really very busy. I, uh, after opening up my room, I have a couple of procedures that I do right away. Um, I do have to do a lot of paperwork. Keeping track of 2,000, 2,200 kids is a lot. Uh, I give out daily medications. I do a lot of uh, blood pressure checks. Um, but if I don't have a lot of ill or injured students, then I have a lot of paperwork that I try to keep up on health concerns and I try to plan some programs for the school uh, to keep the students and the staff healthy. Nurse Betty doesn't just do one thing. On the other hand, there are many services she can provide for you. Well, I can do uh, anything that they need. I have, uh, we can, we change, go anywhere from changing oxygen tanks to taking blood pressures to giving medication. I do a lot of referrals to doctors. I can actually coordinate with Arkansas Children's Hospital and we keep working relationships with the, co the clinics and the doctors. So we do a lot of uh, checks and make sure that 
that we coordinate care of the student between the doctor and here at school. Nurse Betty doesn't work hard because of the money, but she actually enjoys being a nurse. I like uh, being with the students. I like working with uh, patients or students. The paperwork I don't like, but it's a necessary part. But I like um, taking care of people. I like doing the programs. Um, one of the best things I like to do is some preventative programs on trauma, driving, staying well, uh, those kind of things. Those would be my favorite things. It's time for the season in which everyone gets sick and there's ways to prevent illnesses. One of the simplest ways that you can keep from getting ill, because it's, there's all kinds of viruses out there, is hand washing, um, hand gel, hand sanitizer. I really like to promote hand sanitizer because I found that when you wash your hands too often, if you don't turn the sink off with a paper towel, then you're just getting it back on you. Hand sanitizer really often, covering your sneezes, staying home when you're ill, and I know that's hard because you'll have so much to do, but if you have um, um, a cold or cough or fever, you need to stay home. How do you know when to go see the nurse? I know. And, and when do students need to come see me when they're feeling sick? It's always good if you can try to do some of the, the simple remedies at home, rest and fluid, things like that. But if you do some of those simple things, you take care of yourself, you've eaten, and you still don't feel good, then you need to tell your teacher and to come see me. Uh, I don't ever mind seeing students. Sometimes you have to wait and sometimes it's busy. Today I had all of my rooms filled up and all of my chairs filled up. But if you're not feeling well and it's something that you need help with or even questions, uh, you need, I'm happy to see you. It's also very important to have the policy on medicine in mind. This is difficult. I know a lot of, sometimes a, a simple Tylenol or ibuprofen would help, but the Springdale School District um, cannot dispense medicines, which means I can't give you any medication, even simple over-the-counter medications, because you have to, the doctor has to send a note, you have to send me the medicine, and your parent has to give me permission. The only, and the reason that we do that is you, I don't have one doctor that gives me orders. When I work as a nurse, then I have to have a doctor's orders. It's not like your mom giving you Tylenol or Motrin. And I know it's difficult, but sometimes I have a lot of um, things that we can do that can help in between if you need something, uh, or we can always call your parent if you need that. But no, I can't really give any medications unless I've prearranged that with your, mo your parents, your guardian, and your doctor. Flu season is here and you'll need to protect yourself. I'm getting excited. We are, I'm going to announce to y'all November the 1st. We don't want to get the flu. This is somebody who doesn't feel good, right? We are having our flu clinic here again. These are going to be free flu shots. Uh, I will soon be sending out packets to everybody. Uh, you're just going to send a few to each teacher. Please get those back to me if you're interested. Be very careful to fill all the, the parts out, and then there's a lot of questions you have to ask, and then you have to check off. Um, but we had only probably 350 students last year that took the flu shot. It's a really uh, terrible disease. You're going to feel bad. You're going to miss seven to ten days of a class, and it's a very simple little injection that you can get. And again, it's free, November the 1st. Be looking for these. They're going to be on the website uh, that you can print off the forms, and I'll have some here. Uh, by my door. I have a little table if you ever want to come by. I have uh, information at my table and some posters and information. Uh, or again, a few, your teachers will have a few of them when we pass these out sometimes early next week. Woof woof, go Bulldogs! <laughs> Many lives are affected every day by cancer. Today we bring you the story of Ms. Parker, Vice Principal of J.O. Kelly, her fight and win. Imagine one day you're having the time of your life and suddenly you find out you have cancer I was really scared. Um, when you hear the word cancer, you think of people that you know that have died from cancer and you think, am I going to die? Because I was 37 when I was diagnosed and I thought, I'm too young to die. I have little kids that I want to raise. Um, so I was really just terrified at first. Um, but eventually when I got to meet my neurosurgeon, which is the brain surgeon uh, who would work on me, he was able to give me encouragement that he would be able to get that brain tumor out. Realizing you have cancer can be an adjustment. I have coped through my faith and through um, my support system. 
like I said, uh, my parents and my husband have been so supportive. And, and one thing when you're fighting cancer, you've got to be very positive. If you go into it with the attitude of, I'm just going to die. I, I really think your body almost starts shutting down on you. Um, but if you go into it as, I'm going to fight this as much as I can. I'm going to try to do the things that I can. I'm going to research as much as I can. And we did a lot of research about brain cancer, which was the kind of cancer I had. And there were even certain types of foods that we found that have been proven in some scientific studies uh, to fight different types of cancer, such as uh, green tea and lemon being as strong as chemotherapy. So I've added a lot of those things to my diet. I eat a lot healthier than I did before. Um, so I've learned a lot about taking better care of myself. So um, the worst point actually was not the diagnosis after I had brain surgery, I kept having unexplained pain in my head and they could not explain why it was hurting so bad. And I would describe it as it felt like my eyeballs were getting smushed. Um, and one day when they laid me down for radiation, they put a mask on you that snaps on real tight and the back of my head literally popped open, not to gross you out, but all this fluid fell out of the back of my head but that relieved all the pain that I was feeling in my head and it was an infection after the original brain surgery. So that was probably the low point because I was having so much pain in my head but then once the head split open all the fluid came out and they did another surgery and fixed it and so um, the hair is starting to grow back now and I'm starting to look more normal. When you're at a hospital it's it's scary and you want to be with your family and you miss your children and it is so important and people that are going to go into the nursing field I hope those students that are considering that a nurse's bedside manner and support means so much when they are kind to you and listen to you and just take time to comfort you and support you it means so much um, if you have a nurse that just kind of acts irritated if you push the call button because you're sick or something, that makes you feel bad. So I've learned a lot about different types of nurses and I've had wonderful nurses and uh, wonderful doctors at the hospitals and I've been in several hospitals because I had to do a couple surgeries on my head and also had to have something called a port put in to take my chemotherapy medicine. Um, so you learn about how different hospitals run. They're very clean um, and the staff has to work together and communicate together very well because sometimes it seems like if they don't communicate you'll have different people come in asking you the same questions over and over and you think communication is so important in the hospital just like it's important in schools. So communication is important and also just being positive and supporting um, your patient even if you think the outcome could be bad you know miracles happen every day and I think uh, God gave me a miracle and people have been so supportive former students um, even such as Christian who's one of the filmers today even though cancer is scary there are miracles the best point I think was when I did my first MRI um, where they look inside the brain and it was several months after surgery and they're checking to see if the tumor has started to regrow or is it gone and this type of brain tumor um, is called a glioma and there are several kinds and mine was a grade 3 cancerous glioma and you can almost picture it like a spider web going around your brain and it can kind of weave in and out of your brain. And after I did my first MRI and when the radiologist came back in and said, it is completely clear, the tumor's not regrowing. Ms. Parker is still winning her fight. And with the support of her family, life continues to be wonderful. I love you, Mama. This is Amberly from Bulldog TV. That's all the news we have for you today, Bulldogs. I'm Ariel. And I'm Amberly. Stay classy, Springdale. Mm -hmm.